Welcome you then to our feature, The Political View. That's where we look at uh, the stories politically that you should keep an eye on this week. Today, we're joined by News24 investigative journalist Carl Cohen, who will help unpack some of the topics which include, of course, Tom Moyane, the fight back by Malusi Gigaba in terms of a state capture, and, of course, will the president or when will the president appear before the Zondo Commission. A uh, very good evening to you, and thank you so much for joining us. Listen, Tom Moyane went out guns blazing last week, saying he's not the devil incarnate, uh, but all of his appeals came to naught because the president, as we know, fired him. He's not taking that line down. No, he isn't. He's, Tom Ayan is going to stand by his constitutional court application and essentially say that these two inquiries that were instituted, you know, the, the Nugent Commission at its SARS as well as the disciplinary inquiry, shouldn't be running at the same time. He's going to try and challenge the president's decision to actually establish those inquiries, which, as we know, the courts don't generally get involved in telling the president what he can and can't do. So now the president has exercised his prerogative. He has fired Tom Miani on based on a recommendation, recommendation, excuse me, by, yeah. by the Nugent Commission. So now Tom says, I'm going to go to Concord. I'm going to fight this. I'm not going to take this line yeah, down. Because he says, you can't fire me based on the recommendation of a process I objected to in the first place. That's correct. But his objections weren't upheld and he should have gone to court then. The problem is, is that Tom Ayani has never substantively dealt with any of the allegations against him. It's been attacking the process, attacking the process. He hasn't once stood up and said, no, it's not true. I didn't destroy SARS. I didn't appoint these people. I didn't collude with Bain on how to make SARS better and then in fact make it worse. So what Tom Ayani needs to do, and I think this is what we would also like to to see is actually deal with the allegations against him and then we'll take him a little bit more seriously when he goes to the constitutional court and says I think the process is unfair. Well, the president says it's a moot point anyway because now you have been dismissed, case closed. That's right. So it's quite interesting. I think what we'll see is we'll, we might see sort of a change to, to the Concord application. We might see an amended prayer being added in there. And essentially what I think Tom Ayani is going to try and do now is he's going to try and get the court to rule that his dismissal has now been unfair and prejudiced and his rights weren't taken into account. I don't think he's going to get very far because, as I mentioned, the courts do recognize the president's you know, Bureaucracy. powers. That's right. Well, also the president has said that, you know, his uh, affidavit is littered with gratuitous allegations against the president himself and a number of people that are involved in the process. There is also a case to be made about the relationship having broken down irretrievably. That's very true. You know, I don't think at this stage we would see Tom Oyani and President Cyril Ramaphosa at a table drinking tea and shaking hands. I think it's, it's become too public. It's become too messy. And also what President Cyril Ramaphosa said in his, in his affidavit to the Concord is that it's become unseemly of a senior public official to actually be acting like this. And what he's trying to tell Tom in a very nice way way is that please just go away we're tired of you we want to bring new leadership in at SARS we don't want this to be a big debacle because again Cyril's on a big drive to bring investment to bring confidence back into the economy and a fight with your commissioner of the tax agency just doesn't really bode well for you you say please go away I think that all eyes are on the president to say that about his home affairs minister who by the way of course we've seen in recent days is fighting back uh, he's fighting hard he says he wants to uh, he wants the ANC to pronounce on this he says there's an orchestrated campaign uh, to demonize him using language quite similar to Tom Miani in a sense uh, but he's not uh, he's not going to go uh, quietly into the night is he no well that's what we can expect from Malusi Gigaba he's never been quiet and he's never known what to say and when to say it I think at this stage what we really need to concentrate on is we need to forget about the videos circulating you know putting him in different positions. We need to focus on the fact that he went through a process through the courts in our country. What's his argument? I don't get it. He says he wasn't given a chance to explain himself. The judgment is quite clear on a number of issues. Mm, mm. I mean, take, for example, the issue of the minutes, which the Oppenheimers raised in Parliament last week when yes. they were there. He wrote it in his own own handwriting that's according right. to the judgment right. saying that the approval had been suspended. What are we talking about if those minutes is, uh, were noted by, the own, by his own officials at Home so Affairs? So I think what he's trying to do through his new spin doctor as well is he's trying to paint a picture of this conspiracy and, and it's sort of the last cry of the dying politician, isn't it? That we want to say that the whole world is against us. And from Malusi Gigaba's point of view, maybe it is. Because if you think about it, you're looking at the video was leaked, then you have the Concord ruling, you have the Public Protector's report, and then the interim report, uh, the Parliamentary Portfolio Committee on ESCOM's interim report is also leaked. 
So it does, from his point of view, it probably looks like someone's attacking him. But what we have to understand is that this is a culmination of years of events that are coming, finally coming to a head. Does We've he have a point about the leaked report in Parliament, though? He does. He wants to, he's taking legal advice. This is what he's recently told my colleague. And he wants to take legal advice. He also wants to get the ANC to pronounce on the leaking of this report. He wants the Speaker of Parliament, Balea Kambete, also to get involved. I'm not really sure why he's saying that his dignity has been impugned and the report might change. And, well, let's face it, the report won't change insofar as it get, it, it's about Malusi Gigaba. Conundrum for the President, though. If he acts on Gigaba, what does he do about someone like Matabile Lamin, who has a real constituency behind her? Well, the bar has been set with the resignation of the, finan the former finance minister, Ntlantlanene, and he lied to a news agency. He didn't lie to parliament or he didn't lie in court papers. He just didn't tell someone about some meetings that he had. And he felt embarrassed enough to actually resign. That never happened with Gigaba. No. I mean, at this stage, he's going to argue every point that he possibly can to stay in that position. We do have various maneuvers in the ANC that are keeping him there for very strategic reasons, to keep people happy. But at this stage, if President Cyril Ramaphosa does not act on Malusi Gigaba and the, as the Minister of Home Affairs, bye if he does not dawn. push him out. Bye-bye New Dawn. It's that's as simple it. as that. That's it. He needs to act, otherwise he becomes complicit. All right, let's talk about the Zonda Commission. Of course, uh, the President there also saying he's prepared to come forward and state what he knew because there have been a lot of questions raised about how he could have been number two with all the evidence that's come out and either not have known or didn't do anything about what was happening. Yes, so we, as we know, President Cyril Ramaphosa has now said, look, if the Zonda Commission calls me, I will go. I don't think the story has been getting enough attention. This is the deputy president who is now the president of the ANC and the president of the country saying, I will appear before this commission. I will tell you about what I did to fight state capture. Because what he, what he told uh, Times Live, who wrote the report, he said, look, no one's going to believe me if I talk now. Wait until I get to the Zonda Commission and I'll tell you. And that's been a, one of Cyril's biggest criticisms. You were the deputy president. You were in a position of power. How could you not have known? How did, well, he knew. The question is, what, what did, did you, you do? do? That's right. So, I mean, what, what, what are we likely to hear? Uh, because he could obviously very, mal, very well make the argument that he mm. wasn't uh, involved in some of the decision making that, uh, you know, around mm. things like ESCOM, for example, uh, that ministers, uh, people like Lynn Brown... Uh, mm. And, of course, what we have seen uh, with a number of other officials who have been implicated in all of this, he wouldn't have been privy to a lot of those dealings. Is there a point to be made there? Yes. Um, during Ntlantla Nene's testimony before the Zondo Commission, he, there was a, a, an unclassified cabinet memo which showed that the nuclear deal had been approved. And, and remember, when we're speaking about the nuclear deal, it forms part of state capture, not necessarily Gupta state capture. And the, president, the deputy president, our current president, was well aware of that. He was in a position in cabinet where he would have seen the maneuverings. He would have been the person reasoning with president, former President Zuma about when to fire certain finance ministers and when not to do that. So I think what we're going to see when President uh, Ramaphosa become, comes before the commission, it's bombshell after bombshell after bombshell. He's going to tell us about meetings that he had, interventions that he had to run. Do we then get to that point? Because Jacob Zuma has been saying he's watched, uh, he's followed it closely. Mm. Nothing has uh, implicated him directly. Is this the smoking gun? Is this the moment where he can no longer blink, he can no longer look away? It definitely seems so. And I think it's disingenuous of former President Zuma to say that nothing implicates me. The buck stopped with you. You were the president. You were the leader of the ANC. You are implicated by default, even if these people were not your friends. And I think once President Ramaphosa comes out and tells us about, oh, you know, during this time, we knew about this, the Gupta family. We knew about this deal and that deal. And this is what we tried to do. We tried to appoint people to treasury to maybe you know reinforce the ranks there so let's talk about the broader picture then as we wrap up our conversation in all of this whether you're looking at the tom moyani matter whether you're looking at how he might deal with malusi kikaba and of course even the zonda commission mm -hmm. there is a view that Cyril ramaphosa's strategy has been using process mm -hmm. so that at the end of the day it can't be said these were decisions he was taking against people he doesn't like people not on his side in terms of ANC uh, balancing mm -hmm. uh, forces there mm -hmm. within the party he can always point to processes and say listen it's not me that's what the independent independent process has found is it working it is working it may it might be a little bit too slow for our liking 
but it's working. The cleanup is happening. Tom Moyane has been fired. The processes will happen, but essentially he's gone. This leaves space for someone new to be appointed. Sean Abrams is gone. Pretty soon, people like Nom Trobo Jiba and Lawrence Mkwebi, they will also be gone. There's a process unfolding, but slowly but surely, these very transparent, very public processes are happening. And basically what the president is doing is he's putting himself in a position where I don't have a choice anymore. I have to fire this person. Very quickly, how much time left for Kigab? Two weeks. Two weeks. Oh, I'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much. Of course, that's investigative journalist with News24, Carl Cohen, doing this week's political view. Stay with us. We've got more after this quick break.